Okay, welcome to Bloom in Full Color, where we live life in high definition. So I, I will preface it, preface this episode with we are going to be eating tortilla chips Yay! in front of a microphone. Sorry, so it might get a little. So sorry. <laughs> All right, so I got PJ and Dave and myself, Jennifer Moss, with you today. So we've hit the cooking stage. Yay! All right. So we're filming this at the middle of May. So what's in season this time of year? Strawberries. Strawberries, absolutely. They're coming. Rhubarb, yeah. where I'm starting rhubarb. to harvest rhubarb yeah. out of my garden. You're Asparagus also, is yeah. rolling. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Peas. Yeah, right. Peas, if you had an yeah, early garden. Beans. Yeah, you might. Beans. Your early beans might your be. Your early beans. Early, radishes. Early. Oh, yes. Beets. Yeah. Uh, spinach. Spin- I, I plant lettuces. spinach in the fall. Spinach, lettuces are up. Yeah. Lettuces. Yeah. Uh-huh. Broccoli. Cool season. Cauliflower. Cool season. Mm-hmm. Those things are yeah. coming on. But also, Idaho, the frost date's a little late this year because it's been stupid cold, and now it's Stupid warm all of a sudden, but <laughs> yay for spring in Idaho. So what do you find at the grocery store right now? Avocados coming out of your damn ears. <laughs> Yeah. So we're actually doing a guacamole episode. Yum. Yeah, love <laughs> yeah. guacamole. Everybody loves guacamole. So I put these guys guacamole. off like an hour longer because we... Uh, and now we're yeah. starving. Yeah, now they're like ravenous, uh, yeah. so it's kind of perfect. <laughs> um, all right, so I need to tell a story how I came across these recipes. So when I originally joined the greenhouse, um, I was assistant manager of retail for, for a hot minute. And my mother and I took a trip to Chicago to the independent garden center, uh, big the, national the show. show. Mm-hmm. And it was down, it was on the Chicago pier then. And one of the keynote speakers was Rick Bayless, who does Mexico one plate at a time on PBS. So what did this little cooking nerd do? I got all the cookbooks. I had them signed. It was like, <laughs> I totally nerded out. Well, I came back and it became the standing joke in the office. I, so I'm kind of laughing that Tammy's not at work today, <laughs> but um, she it. firmly believes you do not mess with something good like standard guacamole. Well, when I got Rick Bayless's book, I'm like, oh my God try all the guacamoles. <laughs> so I made these three actually, um, on top of, no, actually I did one with bacon that we don't have here today. Um, and then I did the mango guacamole and the toasted pepita guacamole and I fell in love. I was like, well, you don't need regular guacamole when you get messed with guacamole. So I, uh, then it began the, does it have mangoes in it? Every <laughs> single time I would cook. And I was like, Do you know what? Mangoes are stupid good. So leave it alone. <laughs> um, so then I intentionally started putting mangoes in everything just to be right. that, guy, right. that guy. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, like my banana bread would have mangoes, salads <laughs> would have mangoes and my guacamole has mangoes. So ironically, mangoes are also in season right now. So I was like, oh, it's happening. She's like, when are you doing the podcast? I was like, Thursday. She's like, ha! It's my day off. I'm like, damn. Leave, so leave a little bit on we, her desk. We are for sure. going to have mango guacamole yeah. in Tammy's honor, whether Wee. she likes it or not. So, th- yeah, that's kind of guacamole is my favorite condiment. And there is a time of the year that avocados suck too. And it's usually midsummer. Have you noticed that? Well, supply gets. Uh... Less. Well, they go, they, they go out of season. Smaller. They go out of season. Yeah. 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 So they're, they're in season right now right. into June to a certain degree, but guacamole is kind of where it's at. So we got to, I got to bring up this geeky um, statement because we're all plant people. Oh yeah. And we talked about Absolutely. it before the cameras. Were, Absolutely. But avocados are weird in that the tree can store the fruit indefinitely without it going bad. So the tree stops the fruit from ripening. Avocados don't even start ripening until you pull them off. And a tree can hold on to it almost as long as it wants to. So you can't wait for it to so ripen on the tree no, well, like any other no, fruit. No, you, you don't pull it off and store it. If you're not selling it, you leave it on the tree because the tree is just <laughs> holding it in in suspended animation, okay. basically. Is that cool for a tree? That, that amazes is. me that it's yeah, able to control yeah. its own fruit. You know, most trees fruit, they rot, they fall off, and is they move on. Is that every kind of avocado, That's I a wonder? great question, and I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Well, the I'm, reason I Because there's more yeah. than one, for well, sure. Well, absolutely. I'm thinking of when you're in Hawaii, and you go to the, oh, the, the farmer's market, the giant ones. And they have a pretty big seed in the center, but the avocados are huge. They are, but I swear it's yeah. the same amount of meat because yeah. the, the middle was like yeah. a grapefruit. You know what I mean? It, you're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong. But are you still in the experience in Hawaii? No, yeah, true. Come on. Yeah, true. They also have those pineapples that are so stupid sweet. They can puree them right there and it tastes like ice cream. I'm not. I d- will take yeah. you to Kauai yeah. the next yeah. time I go. I okay. Let's, I will. Yeah. Yeah. Or Maui. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so exactly. pineapples just are coming out of season. So they're a spring fruit. So yeah, that's something I think of it this way. They're on a, t- they're so much closer to the equator. It's a completely different I, season. I, you know, years ago there was a, a commercial out. Maybe you guys remember it. And it's probably been within the last 20 years and it was produced by the avocado growers of America. 
Okay. Okay. And they would have these on for the sporting shows and, and things like that. You know, hey, it's avocado season, or they, they would have the dancing avocados. Oh, and, yeah. And uh, Zach, you're going to have to find that commercial and just superimpose it here as I'm talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> Across the screen. <laughs> yeah. But the, the amazing thing, that, and they ran this for about a season. Avocado sales jumped. I mean. Huge. Hugely. And then they were concerned because they couldn't supply the demand. Oh, I so avocados from Mexico. Yeah, yeah. I know exactly you know, what you guys down there are chewing. You know, so all of a sudden your prices go up, you know, oh, because absolutely. of the supply and demand type That's thing. That's economics so at its finest. It, you take a look at it and say, okay, did avocados really need to be advertised? I mean, you know, everybody loves guacamole or everybody I know loves guacamole. Well, and then the know, trend with avocado toast yeah, and yeah. all of the things that have happened. Have you ever done the um, avocado where you bake an egg in it? So my brother tried to do this, and he's like, the avocado was too hard. I was like, all right, first, you need a ripe avocado. <laughs> Let's start there. Second, was your avocado cold? Well, it was in the fridge. I'm like, yeah, you got to have it at room temperature, homie. Yep. And then put a room temperature egg in it before you bake it. Ding. Notice bake this. Ding, ding. I have ding, never ding. seen a recipe. Yeah, you have to bake it. Oh, that would be the first recipe I've ever seen with a cooked avocado. If you think about it, every yeah. time you use avocado, it's, it's, fresh. Uh, it's, a to- it's, it's, fresh. it's not yeah. cooked. So let it's me, over the top of cooked yeah. stuff. Yeah. Let me suggest something else. And this is when you hear it, you're like, oh, put it into your scrambled eggs. Oh, well, I mm-hmm. avocado we and eggs. Anything with avocado. If we got oh, avocado, yeah. a half yeah. goes on the egg yeah. plate no matter what. Yeah. And it's just yeah. part of breakfast. I love avocado. It's such good and fat, eggs. too. Like it was, it was mm-hmm. maligned so for a while. For it's so good, man. So healthy. For so, you. yeah, that's one of those things you need to do. It feel is good. also one of the allergen foods. So it's related to all. Yeah. So I have some friends who are allergic to avocado. And that, I mean, that I am not, right. ironically. Yeah, so of all we, the things we, you're allergic we to. We joke about all the things that Jennifer's <laughs> allergic to. Um, it was pretty funny. So food is my love language at the greenhouse. And, um, I, well, it's actually my food. Food is my love language across my entire life. But at the greenhouse, how I thank employees, um, we we make sure that everybody's fed. And uh, one of the gals that works for us was very quick to say, hey, Jennifer got this for you guys and she can't eat any of it. (laughs) So that's how much she likes you. And I was just like, I guess I hadn't thought about it like that. You're absolutely right. Really, it was just because it was more affordable and it feeds several people. To be fair, Foodie Friday was your idea. And I don't think we've done one yet with any food you can eat. Only Every- when I made the soup and brought it myself. Yeah, and it was yeah. one of the four <laughs> soups. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it, well, and food's a motivator. And so what is one thing you culturally can always connect around no matter what country you're in, yeah. no matter what? Everybody has to eat. Some of the best conversations, and I haven't gone to a lot of dinner parties, but uh, there was one that I went to years ago when I first came out here, and it was out in uh, Bliss. And this gentleman, George, invited, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 people. And he had this beautiful hot tub area and we all got in and we soaked and then he had a dinner. Yeah. Okay. So you had 14 people around a table such as this and the conversations over dinner with the different people, those are always the great things, you know, and and you look at the trade shows and things that we do and the vendors, you know, so you've got all these different conversations and you can get in and get out. You learn so much about a person through a lot of these conversations. I'm having a know, flashback to when I took you to Juniper and you had apple crisp with habanero ice cream <laughs> and he didn't read the description. Oh. How'd that go? Yeah. Okay, he so seems this, too white for habanero is, ice cream. Oh, it absolutely was. This is actually when I got fired from picking the yeah, restaurant. Yeah. Um, so we, but, went, to, we went to Juniper. It wasn't me. It was It was, it was Paul not as just well. you. Yeah, no, he was not alone in his error right. in judgment. Um, so I was sitting next to our production manager at the time who was a, who was a hothead. He was pepperhead yeah, like I am. Yeah. We're both dragon breathers. And uh, Steve is from Santa Fe. And Steve and I are sitting next to each other. And... <laughs> and we see both Paul Butler, our soil salesman, and Dave order this. And I look at Steve. I say, you think you read the description? And he goes, I don't think so. So we waited till they sat down and they both took one bite. They were so excited. And they're both, oh, oh, oh. oh God, it was funny. I was like, you didn't read the description? It was habanero ice cream. Spicy pie, too. I'm not. Dude, I'm it, was, not. it was incredible. Have you ever had habanero ice cream? Or like a no. spice? Oh, so it's it's a complete play off your, your. Well, to be fair, we. We, well, it must be on another segment or something, but right, we're doing like a habanero jelly or something oh, yeah. today, so right? Yeah, so do a pineapple yeah. habanero right. Which jelly. Which is, you never think of those two things. They're pretty delicious. It's, actually, it's the, I am going to 
present to you on our next episode. So we're filming three today, guys. Yeah. 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 Spoiler, hungry. spoiler. <laughs> <laughs> I told everybody to come starving. I've I've only had a couple bites of avocado or guacamole myself, and we're at one twenty two. So <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna get our meal in. Um, but uh, the reason my husband fell in love with me was wheat thins, Greek alumi, grilling cheese, and pineapple habanero jelly. <laughs> So, yeah, I'm gonna experience. Cool story. I like I'm, gonna it, yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna introduce you guys to that. All right, so we need to taste some of this stuff. So, how I kind of did this is I took five avocados and just mashed them up in a bowl with some salt and some lime juice, and then I distributed it between three bowls, and I made a classic guacamole. And I cheat. Okay, so some people dice up. Tomatoes, I just use salsa and save well, myself. Perfect. Some. Well, it's already, you've already hey, done the one. Yeah, no, no, everything is in it. So no shit. <laughs> Tell me, it works smarter, not harder. <laughs> and then the second one is actually a mango guacamole. We didn't put any tomatoes in that, but we can. And so I've kind of put some salsas out here as well. I just have a standard medium salsa and then a salsa verde. And then we have a toasted pepita. Um, Salsa and I heard guacamole. And I honestly, the first time I made this, I was like, that sounds weird. But usually weird things are pretty good. I actually have a good friend. Uh, she she loves Mexican food. And when we would hang out a lot, she's since moved to Oregon. But uh, she says you find the weirdest thing on a Mexican menu that's one of their specialties. And that's what you order. Because hmm. I was like, where, where did you find this on the menu? So I've started to practice that a little bit. And there is some weird stuff on and other. I feel like you could not go wrong in a Mexican restaurant either. Like yeah. what? I you know the ingredients. Like, I feel like you can, but <laughs> yeah. that's, so. And the reason I say this, <laughs> you I have. eat food retard because I can't eat half the crap uh, well, that they have. That yeah. don't order veggie fajitas at a Mexican restaurant. Just don't do it. Oh. Okay, see... The, Should we talk about fajitas for a second? Because this, this is a very, very close scab that ooh, we need ooh, to pick. Did I quick. just pick it? Oh, my God, you did. So, <laughs> my dad, who was a very smart guy, okay, very, very smart um, guy, computer programmer, just an intelligent dude, right? Um, but, man, did he swing and miss on some business stuff. So, the, the last one was they lived in Oxnard, California. Oxnard is the strawberry capital of California. Okay. It literally is where most of the strawberries in the whole state come from. So, the Hispanic population That will be featured in our third episode humongous. we're doing today. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Right, we'll talk I about found it, right? strawberries yeah. like this well, So big. my dad incredible. decided they were going to put, they had no money. These were poor people. It was my dad and my little brother. They scrapped all their money together and they were going to have a fajita stand at the Cinco de Mayo festival, which in Oxnard is four days. They sold four fajitas in four days. Fajitas was made at Applebee's. No Mexican people eat fajitas. They no. have never heard of fajitas. <laughs> That's the whitest, <laughs> cracker barrel stuff you could okay. possibly do. They ate fajita. I would call like a month you... later and go, what are you doing? Because like, I'm making fajita cookies. Uh, what? We All of our money got spent on fajita makings, and this is all we have to eat for the next four months. So I'm like, what's for breakfast? Fajita pancakes. Um, we're having some fajita um, upside down cake a little bit later. Oh, God. Like, so fajitas, very, very fun scab. Uh, oh. Thanks. Very white. This is also why I put mangoes in everything for a while. It wasn't because I overspent on mangoes. I would buy the Costco side package. Oh, yes. And I would have to be like, Use what them. do I do with more of the mangoes? Honey, like, what do you want to do with 17 pounds of yeah, mango? Yeah. That's like so when you get the lemons. Sale. So now that we're kind of looking at this, how yeah. come we're not doing a blind test? Okay, what I, what is our palate? You know, taste, you know? so let's, let's go back to what we do in the seasonality of our job. It's May 18th yeah. when we're doing this. Yeah. Yes. We've just survived the two worst weeks of the entire year and by worst means the busiest Business. right, right, right. Busiest. it doesn't no, mean worst. it's a bad thing they weren't, they, yeah they weren't no bad. it there's moments where you're like oh we're doing our job and other things what am i in the fiery pits of hell <laughs> um you know and it's usually just human error because we're tired you want to so see true range of human emotion at a greenhouse <laughs> It's this two weeks that we've just show gone up the through. first two yeah. weeks. Of this May. is when the filming media if we're That's doing the, the docu series. Oh god, <laughs> it's like you know, like the draft in the NFL or right. playoffs. Like right. that's the best. I, it's it's retail at Christmas. It's if I do not have Black Friday, the perfect. Red geranium that's exactly this variety. The entire world is over, and it's all your fault. And you're like. <laughs> Untrue. I love your little signs. <laughs> Zach's getting new tools. <laughs> He's getting really good. <laughs> I throw him into the fire all the time. It's great. Um, nice. Yeah. So, uh, what do you guys think? You you've kind of tried each for, one. For, and they look beautiful. Let's start look, off with. I have I, not I, tried each one. I'm already, okay. This one's a little spicy, and she's got some pepper well, in this one. So just all right. That's buckle up. Then I gotta go for the. I gotta yep. go for the um, first one. Then right. I'm so. impressed. You must have just made these five minutes ago because nothing is going brown yet. 
Yeah, okay, I made, what, I, well, lots I made of lemon juice? about lunch. Uh, lime juice. Okay, it must be lots because nothing has turned brown. And I, I am the go. guy that just peels off the brown and eats everything else anyways. So, and Doesn't I, scare me. I also want to expose you guys to something different. So I'm That's a good. little sensitive to corn, but I can tolerate it. So I actually use cassava dip chips. There you go. When I do mine. So you got to try it. They're yeah, just I'll like try. a tortilla chip. Cassava? Cassava. Yep. Cassava, which is a root vegetable. So that one was good. This one good. It's got yeah, some heat to good. it. Mm. Yeah. Probably I didn't I feel. Like I didn't taste any heat. I, just, I thought I it was a little, pepper, little sweet. Didn't. A little sweet. Mm. Well, all right. Let's see what the mango tastes like. The other um, caveat is the store did not have jalapenos, so there's serranos and everything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm sweet like that. That's sweet. Yeah. So that's your mango. Same. Mango you know, impresses your... me. Somebody brought from Whole Foods to one of our outdoor events mango salsa. Which was every I just love mango it, salsa. Oh my god, yeah. you would never think it goes again. It is so good. The sweet and the salsa. spicy is marvelous together. Marvelous. Mm. So yeah, mm. you've not tried mangoes or mango salsa. Mm. Don't be a chicken like I usually am. Those are good chips. Give it a swap. Oh, they are good <laughs> chips. Great texture, especially it's, for something off normal. Exactly. Well, and they make a thinner one too, but for somebody who's like me who can't tolerate certain greens, because corn is technically a grain. Right. A lot of people don't realize that. Um same with like potatoes are really a starch. They're not a vegetable. Right. No. They sweet never potatoes are. are. Full starch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like sweet potatoes and yams. <laughs> There's a little bit of pepper in No, I'm I just you, I got a little heat in everything I'm getting. Right. So he got lucky. So mm. which one did you like? Oh, I like all. I would say I my did. least favorite is the pepino. Oh, really? Oh, that, yeah. is probably, that is probably my favorite one right it's, there. It's, it, it's good. It's guacamole. It's hard to screw up guacamole. But, yeah, but, but when, the you're, texture, when you're, when you sure. want something different, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love guacamole, but The bacon one's different, different, too, because it's almost like you get the um, the bacon fat mm -hmm. in it, and it, you know, waxy is the word that comes to mind, but it's not really waxy. Just, I think I'm really sensitive to that. So is this all... Those is are real. So all pepino? I do is I took raw pepitas, and you could take salted cooked ones too. And I just got a pan and I warmed it up and I quick fried them. Hmm. Right. That's it. You there. don't need hmm. any oil or anything. You're just trying to toast them. I have a friend who really almost good. always adds yeah. sunflowers to everything. Sunflower seeds. Mm -hmm. Oh, and you would never I get think, down with that. Um, it is like it, mm -hmm. just that little bit of texture to most things just gives you a little crunch, and I'm all about the crunch usually. Oh. So it's one of those weird things that one is decent for you. They taste delicious. Okay. And they'll go with a lot of different things. So because I'm so appropriate all the time, um, there was an eye roll for those who are listening, not watching. <laughs> um, Don't worry about me. I'm just going to enjoy I, it. Yeah. <laughs> um, you guys carry on. Yeah. I'm, a, I'm a texture whore. I right. have to have texture. Right. And crunch is one of my favorite textures. So... I don't like spinach because it's not crunchy. I like romaine and iceberg. And iceberg is a worthless lettuce. Let's be honest. Yeah, there's none of the water. Yeah. Zero nutritional value. Correct. Um, and it doesn't really have any flavor either, which is kind of perfect to get your kids into eating salad. Um, I figured out how to get my daughter to eat salad too. You know what the trick was? Fruit dressing. Which is my, <clears throat> Raspberry vinaigrette. Like, yeah, you, yeah. How, yeah. how dare you? Evil. My wife said, fruity salad. No, I'm out. I, will I don't even know. That's... Cranberries, I don't need no yeah, orange you add the cranberries. No, you no, add no. no. So I shouldn't put mangoes on the Chinese chicken salad that we do well, and in again, the next this, episode. This was the one I think <laughs> that turned into the dark side was these Chinese chicken salad where it's a bunch of fruit and they put so the, like the wontons in it. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, I have never, I am, I, 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 the, my first memory of restaurants was seeing a salad bar buffet. And so I'm a child, this had to have been in the late 70s. And I freaked out. I'm like, oh, my God, a whole restaurant just for salad. I love salad. Mm -hmm. I'm the guy that mm -hmm. I'm two trips through the salad bar, and then I'll chew on a little bit of the steak. I love salad. Not fruit, though. For some <laughs> reason, I just, no fruit on my salad. I actually put fruit in almost every one I put fruit in now. my salad. There you go. My <laughs> wife loves it. I'm, I, once in a while, well, I'll end up with something like that. But it is, I, I bet you I've never ordered it ever. Well, off of a menu, so I so don't you don't. You I'm gonna don't break do like you. The this is now a strategy mm, with the vinaigrettes. Mm, mm. Oh, and and favorite, as yeah. far as salads go, any vegetable. There's not a vegetable you can name you couldn't put in my salad. I'm fine right. with it. I can think of a couple I, that mm, I could do without. I don't know. I'd like me some vegetables. Eggplant. Um, I will show you how to make eggplant taste good. Parmesan. I like eggplant. Parmesan. Parmesan. That's the yeah. only way I can think of. Yeah. Um, actually, we just cook it up almost like a spaghetti sauce. Fresh tomatoes, fresh eggplant in a pot, garlic, onion. So uh, you, it ends up being like a chunky so pure, puree. It? Nope, nope. It was a. We just made it because it was all fresh in the garden. And so my son is okay. a chef, a trained okay. chef, and one of the things that you learn in cooking school. DJ is it, a wonderful. It, chef. He's a. Everybody in my family is a wonderful chef. To be fair, my wife's amazing. I am the least chefy out of mm -hmm. everybody. Um, and, and it's you funny. Can about, cook. No, I can cook. Yeah, There's you no can doubt. Cook, though. I can cook, but 
they wake up in the morning thinking about food. Uh, they wake up in the morning thinking about what am I making for lunch? What I start thinking about food five minutes before I'm ready to eat. I am not a foodie person. Like you guys are self-proclaimed, but definitely not. I am a foodie. But these guys, are, well, one of the things he taught me in, was anything in season can be put in the same dish. So if it's coming out of the garden at the same time, it can go in the same dish. I and, love and it goes that together rule. marvelous. Yeah. You would never guess it, but if it's coming out of the garden together, okay, but it I could wonder go in a dish. if that's regionally. No, I, I no, think that's seasonal. Whatever's, whatever's ready whatever's in the garden right now. Part. Yeah, but I've, like I've heard say, that before. say yeah. you get something from Mexico and then you have something from Alaska. Well, or so, something so from again, Thailand and then something from That's Africa. not coming out of your garden and that's not seasonal. Okay, that's fair. Right? Because Thailand okay. is in, okay. in the fall, we're just, in the right. spring. Just checking. Right? Just so checking. if it's coming out of your garden together, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is, it can go in the same dish. That's so actually if, accurate. If, if 100%, of you can't think of one thing that's coming on together that you couldn't put together and, and it still it works. So right now, again, we just talked about asparagus yep, is coming on. Yep, the yep. peas are coming on the right. I bet those you could take every together. bit of those. You could put them in something and make a soup, a stew, a sauce out of it, and it would be marvelous because they're all fresh and ready right now. Exactly. And here's our selfless plug. We talked about seasonality <laughs> in our last podcast. Yeah. Uh, and yes. guess what? We have all this for sale so that in a few months you can have all of this no seasonal for yourself. Or your we don't do avocados or mangoes. We're not quite tropical. Now, enough. red onions, yes. Red Pepitas, onions, no yep. tomatoes, yes. Um, a couple other things. Uh, oh, yeah, do it, do it to grab it. We're not, we, we're not holding on principle. Mm. All right. So I got to tell you about avocados because you mentioned the five avocados. I used to do these big parties for same as you. Right? Yeah. The food is amazing. One of the things I've learned in business is, um, you go, Hey, will you stay five extra hours and help me today? Well, no. Would you stay five extra hours and help me today? If I give you $7 bite me. Would you stay extra five hours at work if I buy you lunch? Sure. <laughs> it's the same seven goddamn dollars, right? But just it's the presentation. It, it, is it, does this go back to last weekend when I sent you to Whitefish, no. Montana? <laughs> no, 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 but no, but I was just pointing out. I might out have offered dinner in <laughs> you a hotel You did room. offer dinner. Yes, you did. Anyway, so we I learned the like, same thing. Oh, I'm having PTSD. I did this F earlier. Food <laughs> helps. Well, the biggest bowl of avocado I ever made was a hundred, or bowl of guacamole was a hundred avocados. It was a bowl about. Yay big. It was the biggest thing you ever saw in life. I'm probably feeding 60 people, something like that. And what these guys taught me with my guacamole for, this is all all Mexican folks for the most part, and one Cuban guy, and I'll tell you where he comes in in a minute. They taught me, when you're feeding the Hispanic people, you better make the guacamole spicy because then it's a salsa. The first time I did this, I made it gringo style, and I turned around and looked, and my guys were leaving with a plate <laughs> of guacamole. Uh, you would think it was green Stealing ice cream. It. A giant, because it was so. So the guys told me, you got to spice it up, so they start using it as a, well, I did that the next batch, and I about killed my Cuban guy. <laughs> He's like, dude, what is wrong with the guacamole? What the, I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, I'm from Cuba. We don't have no peppers over here. <laughs> what? I don't know what this is. So I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't feed my Cuban guy with you the spicy You can't make guac. everybody happy. You could not. And no. I had 59 happy guys and not a very happy Cuban dude. So 100 avocados. That was a giant batch of guacamole, you guys. Oh, well, I think no party is um, complete without guacamole. I agree. I started adding it to my sandwiches. I use it just, as a spread. Just a sandwich. Yep. It I doesn't do matter as... what kind of sandwich. But I don't like it. doesn't sit well. So it's something that has to be, has to be, to be put on immediate. Yeah. You can't yeah. put it on and then eat it four hours right. later because no. it just right. soggies the bread. And, right. well, and But just as a condiment. Mayonnaise oh. is really boring to me. So I will only actually use aiolis. Now, an aioli is a mayonnaise bet on anything. No. On, oh, I see. It. On a taco, on a sandwich. But there's like, none of that in here, right? No. Okay. No, good. Not that's where you lost me. I'm like, that's very white. Why are we talking about aioli? Hold on. Is there a man? Not that I wouldn't eat it, but that's very gringo. <laughs> yes, it is very gringo. And, I'm like, hold on. Actually, so we have a bunch of Amigas that, that work here, and we have to qualify who made stuff in the break room all the time. <laughs> because they're like, oh, I, did, is this gringo hot or mm -hmm. Mexican hot? And I'm like, oh, that's Mexican hot. You'll be fine. Well, <laughs> PJ can relate. You know, we had a Christmas party a couple of years ago, and I don't know who brought cheese. But I'm asking, okay, who brought the cheese? You know, and they mm -hmm. said it's spicy or whatever. I, took Jack. Oh, I remember gosh. this. I thought I was going to freaking die. You know, it was <laughs> holy crap. So, I, I, seriously, I thought that I was going to have to go to the hospital because it was so hot. And <laughs> PJ's fine. He's like, I don't know what your problem it's is. It's like habanero jack cheese. It's like every gringo in the world, Dave about killed his ass. <laughs> about killed him. Well, so famously in here, Tammy and my mother do not handle spice. And 
they started to not. I'm like, it's mild. And they're like, <gasps> <laughs> we learned in my house, I'm okay. not allowed to give any heat no, rating. Like, I, so we go, either. is it spicy? And she'd go, I'm not talking to you. And she'd go, because <laughs> no, our spice ratings I, are completely wrong. No. I, I have a completely different parameter yeah. in my mouth. Uh-huh. Even, so I didn't eat nightshades for four months. So I've right. just started to introduce nightshades. So I actually taste the heat now a little. Right. Still. Didn't go away. I have plenty of tolerance. <laughs> Just eating away. I'm like, oh, uh, it's a little warm. <clears throat> All right. So I need something to coat my throat. But uh-huh. I um, I have a daughter who, if it is spicy, she can tell mm. without question. Like, she can even smell it and be like, that's too hot. I'm like, what is wrong with you? You haven't even tasted it yet. Sensitive to yeah, the sun, she's, right? she's a sensory kid. So she, she can tell. But well, my other daughter will power through it. She's like, well, if Jennifer's eating. I can eat it. I'm like, okay. And then she'll, I'm dying. I'm like, well, you know, and I, and you want to walk have, with the big we kids. Have a, we have a woman on staff that is very sensitive to. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Like yes. That, you know, Rhonda, she yeah. was one of our co-hosts on yep. a previous yep. episode. Mm-hmm. Now she she's actually allergic to peppers. No, big time. In fact, <laughs> we spray a, we spray a pesticide. I mean, that's what it is, but it's capsaicin based pesticide. Yeah. Right. It's based to, off to, the peppers. It pisses off some thrips. Uh, Bout killed that girl. I think she literally had to take four days off because we oh. put that in a house yeah. and didn't warn her. Yeah. And I don't think her. we, I don't it think we knew bad. about her yeah. allergy at that point. We knew it was peppers. I don't think anybody put two yeah. and two together yeah. to said, "Oh, we're gonna spray this house <laughs> yeah. with something that might." Bout killed her. Like so, it, bugs don't like them. But no, you want to know two animals that don't even notice on hot peppers? Chickens, birds. Yep, I was gonna as say a, birds as a whole. Yep, and I don't think dogs do. Really? Yeah, I don't think dogs do. And where the heat is in the pepper, it's actually in the membrane that well, holds the seeds. seeds. Gotta, yep, the seeds the white, in the yep, membrane. Yep. It's not actually in the fruit itself. Yeah, because if you peel the seeds out and get rid of most of the membrane, you can take almost every pepper and dial to it way back. Unless not, your not, Scoville's yeah. are way up. Correct. But Scoville's you can dial are a it way thing. down yeah. if you can get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. Habanero is one of my favorite peppers. That's Because it has such mind. good flavor. It has like, amazing it's flavor. very hot. I, I get it. So you have to watch your portion mm-hmm. control. What a delicious, it's just a well, fruity. The the trick with mild mouths, I should say this, okay, <laughs> is training your brain, because it's really mind over matter, right? That it's, it's no, no, I'm shaking my head. <laughs> yeah. uh, that it's a flavor, not a temperature. As soon as you can do that, you can develop your heat tolerance if your body can handle it. Because I mean, at a certain point, your body it's can't. It's like drinking beer. You have to train yourself to do it. You, no one just goes, mm, give me some peppers. Same with wine. You, right. You just have to sort of train yourself and go, and you have to be interested in it, obviously. Dave's like, I'm too old. I don't care. I'm not doing it. Uh, <laughs> no yeah. uh-uh. soup for you. It's so good for you. The, the, the capsaicin is one of those things. That's a, It's a magic ingredient that we yeah. all need to get in us. Absolutely. It's kind of one of those weird deals. So it's interesting. I, I just, I, I wonder off topic, but yeah. if people that are allergic to capsaicin or are specific, I wonder if you have a certain set of health issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, do all people that don't do peppers have high blood pressure? Or, I, I, oh. yeah, you know, I wonder if there's a is a correlation to capsaicin. I, I think that I think it has to do with blood type, to be honest Less with tolerance you. or whatever has developed over time. Because when I was younger, you could do it. I could eat all the hot stuff. You know, that, my brother used to be able you know, to, so, and right? now he can't but, tolerate yeah, peppers. So it's you know, it's bizarre. My wife is super. This is why I'm not allowed to say whether things are hot because my opinion mm-hmm. is completely wrong. But she, her tolerance to horseradish, which is a, a heat but is not capsaicin, it's is different. ridiculous. She made sushi one night, and I'm just like, this is pretty, pretty hot. She's just over there scarfing down. I'm like, what? Yeah. I had to look it up. I'm like, why are you not on fire right now? Yeah. And I put one bean in there of my stuff. Her head would have exploded. She's just like, oh, this is good. There's no capsation in horseradish. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a spice coming from a different time. Time. And she is not sensitive at all. She'll eat that shit all day long, but can't put one little habanero in something and forget about it. Yeah. So yeah, you know, with peppers, I'm probably jalapenos is probably about, right, as, about as high as you go. Yeah. And even those will mm. hurt you some, I mean, well, some jal- jal- yeah. peppers in general, you cut one and it's like, Oh, this is great. And then the next one lights you on yeah. fire. Yeah. Right. So oh. haban- or, uh, jalapenos are weird. To but me. where I love the, the Hungarian wax, you know, especially if they're, if they've been pickled or whatever, you know, but you go to, to a restaurant and you get the, um, the yellow Maybe. peppers and pepperoncinis and things right. like that. You know, right. and I can just olive garden or whatever, yeah. right? I can just eat those, you know, okay. oh, that one was hot. Mm, mm, yeah. you know? <laughs> oh, can I have some more of those? You know, so, so you don't, so you have some yeah, like of yeah. the hot. You just are limited to how hot it'll get. All right. That's fair. Yeah. 
All right. Well, so we got to have a little bit of homework because I, I always start finish with homework. So um, I challenge everybody who's a listener to try a different kind of guacamole. Whether you make it yourself, um, I recommend Rick Bayless. He does a really good job. But um, try something different. Or, or put it on something different. Or, so, or so use you it do, in a yeah, different yeah, way. Do it something different. Because use it in a different sandwiches way. Sandwiches is yep. new to me. Uh, you could put avocado on a sandwich, but guacamole, it's like there's I'll the onion, there's should... the tomato. Oh, man. I'll actually use it as a dressing sometimes. Okay. And that's like like, in a salad. Well, well so if I'm somewhere and they only have dairy-based dressing, but they have guacamole and salsa, I'll just take guacamole and salsa and put it on my salad and mix it all up and coat it, and then I'm fine. You're making so. like a... Exactly. Meat free tostada base exactly. or something. I'm, I make it I work. That. I make it work because guacamole is a really universal condiment. Um, also, we we ask that you go out, subscribe um, to to Bloom in Full Color on any of the platforms you listen to. We also have a YouTube channel if you want to see us make complete clowns of ourselves on camera because mm. we do that pretty regularly. Uh, we we all know each other pretty well. <laughs> we hang out every day. You know, you spend more time with the people at work than you do your own family at home. So we Especially all get this to- time of year. Yeah. Oh dear. God, somebody said, oh, yeah, 36 hours. I was like, yeah, that's three days. And they're like, that's a day and a half. I was like, no, that's three work days. Yeah. That's normal right now. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of work days. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I call May brain at this time. Do you guys experience May brain where your brain in May just kind of like doesn't Well, function? that's what I'm saying, you know, the, the statement that I made earlier, you know, the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. He was so happy, but he's not now. You know? <laughs> that's, that's absolutely the- a normal day in the May. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's definitely a thing. Well, with that, guys, uh, we'll wrap up this episode. The next episode, we're going to be going through salads. Mm. Um, and I actually oh, coincidentally cool. forgot one at home. So we're going to alternate in <laughs> with uh, something a little different as well. So uh, subscribe to us. Listen. And then, I'm taking uh, this home with me. And yes. Dave is going to be eating guacamole yeah. for lunch. He won't need dinner. Uh, and then uh, please go live life in full color because planes are pretty boring. Thank you. 